friends welcome to my channel Thanesh here in this video I am going to do a movie sentiment analysis uh, using neural network sentiment analysis or opinion mining opinion mining is a natural language processing technique used to determine whether data is positive, negative, or neutral. Sentiment analysis is often performed on textual data to help businesses monitor brand and product sentiment in customer feedback and understand customer needs. So here, uh, this is the data set I am using. You can download the data set from this link using the Keras embedding layer and Glove word embeddings to Glove word embeddings to convert text to numeric form. Anaconda. Here I have the TensorFlow underscore CPU channels. I am using that, and uh, you can create different channels. I have you know uh, base and you know Python 36. So this uh, this is for you know doing the quantum computing programs, and here it is TensorFlow CPU. It is there. So I have launched the Jupyter notebook from here. So I have imported pandas, the numby, NLTK. If NLTK is not installed in your machine, you can give a pip install NLTK, then it should be installed. I am, you know, getting the uh, one hot in encoding from Keras and patch sequences, the different layers, activation, dropout, tense, flatten. So most of the modules I have, you know, train underscore test underscore split from the SK learn for splitting the training and the testing data set. And I have got the tokenizer from the Keras for tokenizing the words. If you are familiar with NLP, you may be familiar with tokenization, lemmatization, stemming, all these aspects. Let me run this, uh, see, yeah. Uh, it's fine, it's working fine. Next, what I'm going to do is uh, just uh, see, you can see the message using TensorFlow as backend. First, we will import and analyze the data set. Let's now, you know, import the data set. I have saved, you know, I have shown you the link. So I have downloaded the CSV file from that, you know, link from that web page and it is saved in my local system. So let me, you know, analyze. We will just analyze the data set. Let's do, you can see it here. It's uh, the, I have saved the data set inside, you know, D colon Tato Messi um, repeat machine learning sentiment analysis asset. This is the path you can, uh, this is the path I have given in the program. So this I have downloaded, this data set I have downloaded from the link I have shown previously. So I am using the, you know, yeah, you can see here you have it's only the first step, so it starts from zero. So you have the first five rows, uh, both positive and negative sentiments are there. You can see the reviews. See, let's now look at any one of the po any one of the reviews so that we have an idea about the text that we were going to process. Look at. See, you can see here, basic, basically there is a family where a little boy checks. So the text, you can read it here. So this is the review. So the review that what I have done is, you know, one of the reviews just um, I printed it so that I can get a feel of the, you know, text we are going to process. So that's what I have done. You can see that our text contains punctuations, brackets, and a few HTML tags as well. We will pre-process this text in the next section. Um, let's see the distribution of positive and negative sentiments later in our data set. First, we will do, we will pre-process the data. For that, I will use the Seaborn uh, library so I have 
it's I am running it you can see the output here so what does it mean if you see here from the output it's clear that the data set contains equal number of positive and negative reviews now we will get into the data pre-processing we saw that our data set contained punctuations and the HTML tags in this section we will define a function that takes in takes a text string as a parameter and then performs pre-processing on the string to remove special characters and HTML tags from the string. Finally, the string is returned to the calling function. So let's write that script. We will do that. So this is the method we are using. Yeah, uh, it's working now. So if you see the method in the pre-process underscore text method the first step is to remove the html tags to remove the html tags remove underscore tags function has been defined the remove underscore tag tags function simply replaces anything between opening and closing with an empty space that braces opening and closing brackets with an empty space uh, next in the pre-process underscore text function everything is removed except capital and small English letters which results in single characters that make no sense for instance when you remove a apostrophe from the verse marks the apostrophe is replaced by an empty space hence we are left with a single character yes Next, we remove all the single, single characters and replace it by a space which creates multiple spaces in our text. Finally, we remove multiple spaces from our text as well. Next, we will pre- So the pre-processing of our reviews and we will next we will pre-process our reviews and store them in a new list. So I will write the script for that. Let me run this. Yeah, it's working fine. So let's now see the fourth review. We can see the, the output is like this. So from the output you can see that the HTML tags punctuations and numbers have been removed we are only left with alphabets next we need to convert our alphabets into digits since we only have two lab two labels in the output that is positive and negative we can simply convert them into integers by replacing positive with digit one and negative with digit zero so i will write the script for let me run it yeah it's fine <coughs> sorry finally we need to divide our data set into train and test sets the train set will be used to train our deep learning models while the test set will be used to evaluate how will our model performs we can use the train underscore test underscore split method from the sk learn dot model dot selection module i will write the script for that the script uh, so let me run this so the script divi divides our data into 80 percentage for the training set and 20 percentage for the testing set now write the script for our embedding layer the embedding layer converts our textual data into numeric data that is used as the first layer for the deep learning models in Keras. So next is the preparation for the embedding layer. See, as a first step, we will use the tokenizer class from Keras.preprocessing.txt module to create a word to index dictionary. In the word to index dictionary, each word in the corpus is used as a key while a corresponding unique index, index is used as the value for the key. Let me write the script for that. Let me run this. So if you 
uh, view the x underscore train variable in variable uh, explorer you will see that it contains you know uh, 40,000 lists where each list contains integers each list actually corresponds to each sentence each sentence in the training set uh, you can also understand that the size of each list is different this is because sentence have different lengths we set the maximum size of each list to 100 you can try a different size the list with size greater than 100 will be truncated to 100 for the list that have length less than 100 will be uh, will we will add zero to the end of the list until it reaches the maximum length this process is called padding you may be familiar with when you discuss about you know uh, convoluted neural networks and all padding and stride you may be familiar with so let me write a script uh, that finds the vocabulary size and then perform padding on both train and test set so this is the script i have written for the uh, script finds the vocabulary size and then perform padding on both train and test set it's uh, it's working so now if you view the x underscore train or x underscore test you will see that all the lists have same length that is 100 also the vocabulary underscore size variable now contains a value uh, 92547 which means that our corpus has you know this much worse now we will use uh, globe embedding to create our feature matrix uh, in the following, you know, uh, in the coming script, uh, see, uh, I'm the script in the script I'm going to write. We load the glow word embedding and create a dictionary that will contain word as keys and their corresponding embedding list as values. Let me write the script. Let me run this. Uh, see, so we will uh, create an embedding matrix where each row number will correspond to the index of the word in the corpus. The matrix will have 100 columns where each column will contain the glow word embedding for the words in the corpus. Let me write the script for that. So once you execute the above script, you will see that embedding underscore matrix will contain, you know, nine two five four seven rows one for each word in the corpus now we are we can you know recreate the our deep learning models uh, we will use the convolutional neural network uh, for classification convolutional neural network is a type of network that is primarily used for 2d data classification such as images a convolutional network tries to find specific features in an image in the first layer. In the next layers, the initially detected features are joined together to form bigger features. In this way, the whole image is detected. Convolutional neural networks have been found to work well with text data as well. Though text data is one-dimensional, we can use one-dimensional convolutional neural networks to extract features from our data. To learn more about uh, uh, convolutional neural networks, you can watch uh, uh, the videos in my playlist, Convolutional Neural Network. Let's create a simple convolutional neural network with one convolution layer and one pooling layer. Uh, in the script, we created a sequential model followed by an uh, embedding layer. So we created a one-dimensional convolutional layer with 128 features or kernels. The kernel size is 5 and the activation function used here is sigmoid. Uh, we add a global max pooling layer to reduce feature size. Finally, 
we add a dense layer with six sigmoid activation let me run the script yeah you can see the summary here so it's uh, shown here uh, the layer and the dense layer everything you can see it here so you can see that in the above case we don't need to flatten our embedding layer you can also notice that feature size is now reduced using the pooling layer well, now let's train our model and evaluate it on the training set the process to train and test our model uh, it's you know same everywhere we will use the fit and evaluate methods now you can see here it's uh, doing the you no know, training and see the test score and test accuracy uh, see cnn model still it is uh, overfitting as there is a vast difference between the training and test accuracy let us plot the lows and accuracy difference between the training and the test set let's do that So you can see the output here i have written the script here you can see it and the output uh, you can see it here uh, this is the model accuracy and the model lows i i can show you here here you have the model accuracy and model lows you can see it here so uh, you can uh, clearly see the lows and accuracy uh, differences between train and test sets uh, from this plot you can see it here thanks for watching please like share and subscribe thanks a lot